Still got him. Mm -hmm. He's chasing a couple of those around. How is he? They were bedded out there. What do you think, Jace? Would you shoot him? Oh, I haven't really. I'd shoot him. Gotta look at him. He's bigger than any buck we've seen. I mean, yeah, it looks like he's got some mass on the top, mm -hmm. top end. Does the number of years of applying have any impact on how much you want to quote-unquote milk it? I mean, I'm going to put more time into it. I kind of figured that. You didn't get all hopped up and excited like I did and shoot one the first day. Uh, not for lack of trying. <laughs> <laughs> execution lacked on that one a little bit. The desire was there, but the execution wasn't commensurate with yeah. the interest. You're about ready to get a real close look at this other buck, because he just ran three quarter of a mile this direction. He must have seen another buck over here. Cause he just put the burners on, he skittered under the fence and everything. He was, but now he's hid underneath that lip, I can't see him. You know one of the fun things about pronghorn hunting with you, Matthew? Mm, what's that? You're never in a hurry. And I get to spend days and days looking at pronghorn. Yeah. Probably my most favorite thing in the world, hunting world. Yeah, there, right here. Right here. Right across the road. There he is. He's chasing that other buck right here. Well, I know. There's another one out here I'm looking at. Well, what I'm telling you is you're going to get a good look at this buck. <laughs> Coming right to us. <laughs> I don't think you need the spotter, do you? No, but. Look at him running off that little guy. Boy, he put the burners on. He's going to teach him a lesson. That is so funny. That's crazy. <laughs> I mean, we're standing here skyline. The truck oh, wait, is... here he is. is. Oh, yeah, he's going to chase him some more. Look at that. You hear him grunting? Mm-hmm. Well, heck, if you did want to shoot him, that would have worked. Yeah. <laughs> Look at him. Don't have a gun here, though. I don't know, Matthew. Do you think you could hit him? I'm getting 98 yards. Too bad he doesn't have about two inches more in length. I bet you yep. would have shot him then. Oh, yeah, I would have. But he doesn't. <laughs> but he doesn't. <laughs> Well, as I often say, we're we're out window shopping, and sooner or later you got to make a purchase, or you go home without anything. That's the fun part about pronghorn hunting. You never know; it could always be that next one. Off we go. I don't see anything here. It's crazy. Yesterday there was a buck with eight does. That other buck running around here going nuts all. Wow. 18 does over there. We probably just got to keep moving around until we find them. Evidently. Based on what we saw this morning, there's some ruddy behavior. So yeah. they should be moving. And if we're not seeing them, we probably just need to move. move. Yeah, so. I think you're right. I, uh, the other part of that is you think you've seen every buck within an area, but when you go back and you can't relocate them, it shows you how many bucks might be there that you never saw. Yeah. So, oh. what do you want to do? Uh, let's keep looking. Okay. You got to be here somewhere. 
and I, I've been giving it some thought. I think that every young male that's just kind of in that courtship marrying age from about 18 to 25 ought to come and hunt pronghorn in the rut because you'd learn a lot you'd learn that a lot of times you get yourself distracted and you miss the bigger picture. And when you do that, someone else comes and swoops in and takes, takes your darling. And you're standing around looking like what happened. And, uh, you know, the boldest bucks are the ones that always have the, the greatest advantage. So, advantage to the bold. I don't know what that has to do with anything, but. Oh, here comes a box coming up out of the draw. Yeah, he's really tall. He's just so small in the mass that he looks tall. Looks tall. Well, that looks like a nice buck. You're right. You can't see much, but. You can see enough, Matthew. That's a big buck. Yep. Look at this, Jace. Dude, that's like, we need to get, get closer to him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you shooter? We'll, we'll take that one. <laughs> Yeah, I see them. Yeah. There's four bucks there now. He's chasing somebody or getting chased. There, he's running straight down the wash. You see him? He's right, right in the gap there in the middle of the wash. I can't tell without the spotter. This is the guy you want, Matthew. He's got huge prongs. This is the one we were looking at. Unless you think the other one's bigger. I think the other one might have run this guy off. I don't think so. Would you rather we hop in the truck and drive out there a little ways? I'm fine with that. If you guys, the road is right here, I could go get the truck and meet you guys right here. Sure. Uh-oh, there's the other one. Look standing up above him looking our way. There were five or six bucks here. The buck with the hot doe that we watched over there got beat somewhere back here in this canyon. Someone whooped him. And when we pulled up here, Matthew said, look at that great big wide buck. Well, it looks like the great big wide buck is now the one bedded with the doe. And we saw a buck leave out of here that like, boy, that's a really good one, but he's not very aggressive. I think he got his butt whooped. What do you think, Matthew? Let's go, yeah. What's that? Let's go. All right. So they're right here. About 450 yards out, which is too far. So we're gonna try to get a little closer by going around, and hopefully that'll cut it down to about 250 or so. But we're gonna get going. They both bed it down, so it's as good of a time as any. Peek over and see if you can see. 
What? They up ran the up, up to the right. They're gone. They're in the rocks to the right. I don't see them. They're gone. They ran way over here. See this group of trees right here? Yeah. Let's go right there. I think there. they're straight behind that. Let's go. I think what we should probably do mm -hmm. is head back to the truck, get some water, maybe just drive up here quick and see if they made it over there. Okay. And if not, we'll just turn around and go back to where we saw them initially. Okay. Matthew, who was it who said they weren't going to go on another stock without a pack? Was that me? I think that was you. Because I'm completely vapor locked right now. Whew. Oh, that was exciting and then a little disappointing. <laughs> Oh man, that was four hours of waiting, running, waiting, stalking. I did, yeah. I just wish he would have stopped. When she stood up, he wouldn't. The only time he stood still, the only thing I could see was his head. He was kind of down in a little depression. Yeah. And then if she would take a step, he'd run. And he'd. Yeah, he just wouldn't hold still. That's how it goes sometimes, but we've got one more day and we've got two bucks that I'd be happy to shoot running around in yeah. somewhere in this section. Somewhere in, so. Yeah, I I think the one buck who got whooped, I think his home area is back where we first saw him. And that doe led him out of his home area over to someone else's home area who just happened to be a tougher dude than him. And he took him. So maybe if we drive back over there before dark and we just wait it out, maybe we'll, yeah. we'll relocate one of them. Yeah, sounds good to me. I don't know. You don't think he's the original one? It might be. Well, you could ground track him right here at 330 yards. Enormous prongs, good hook. What, what, what are you waiting for? I don't know. Him to come about 100 yards closer. Well, then we can have a real fire goes behind If he goes behind this hill right here, you can sneak 100 yards closer. And put the DDT on him. Oh, he's a pretty buck. I don't think he's the guy, though. But if you want to shoot this pretty one, I'm not here to stop you. What's a man to do when a guy wants to fill his tag on a beautiful buck like that? You just get out of the way. I know this, the buck, the quality of bucks we've seen in here are far better than what we've seen in other places. See that first light colored knob? I think he's the one that got beat. 
He's got his gal taken. He's heavier than this one. But he's a he doesn't curl in as much, though. No. I can't believe I'm standing in the junipers and glass and pronghorn on every... The tops of a lot of these ridges are like little islands free of juniper. And the pronghorn just... I've never seen pronghorn in this kind of... I mean, I've seen a few of them, but to this degree and this number of them. They seem pretty comfortable up here. They do. So what do you want to do? Well, we only have about 45 minutes of daylight left. Yep. So I'd like to go back to where we saw those ones fighting yeah. and kind of failed on our stock and mm -hmm. see if maybe those two have returned out there somewhere where we can get a good look at them. Okay. Where's all the snorting coming from? You see him? Yeah, we got him. Is it a buck? Yeah. Good one? Yes. Looks good. What's that? <laughs> hey, he looks good. He looks heavy. Holy cow, I'm grabbing the gun. Let me see. Uh, yeah, with that mass, he grabbed the gun. Turns out, pronghorn can run a lot faster than I can. He's still out there. Yeah, he's almost 500 right now. He's going to the watering hole. I'm just gonna walk and see how close we can get. We might get lucky, but we don't have time to play this slow and smart. So we're just gonna kinda charge right at him. We've got about 15 minutes of camera light, a little more shooting light, but we'll see. Oh no, he's on the run now. All right, we'll just get going that way and see what we can make happen. So he'd been milling around at 400, 450 yards, something like that. Went behind a little ridge. He didn't like us very much, so he started running. So I ran and he's just kept ahead of us. He's way out there now. So probably gonna keep walking just along the road and see what we can see. But we've got, I don't know, 10 minutes of camera light left. Um, so we'll be back here in the morning. We, we've seen enough, I think. There were three to four bucks that I was ready to just grab the gun and pull the trigger on. This guy, I don't know how well he'd score, but he was really cool. So we're gonna just keep meandering, probably not go quite as hard. Don't wanna run him out of here, but it'd be nice to at least see kind of where he's at. And you know, if we get really lucky, maybe one will pop up right over the hill, so. With that, this is probably the sign off. It's been a good day, really good afternoon. We'll see you in the morning. Here's who we're looking for. Put, put prongs on him. We're looking for a big Hank today. That is, you looking for Matthew Big Hank? Yep. Yep, Big Hank. 
join us. If, we, if there was a hot doe in here, they'd be in here. Yep. And we'd see them. So my theory is the hot doe or hot does are somewhere else. Not too far by, away, but not here. Yeah. Well, I do like the other spot because we can see a little further. Yeah. And if they come in, we just be on the ready. Yep. Okay. I'm good me. with that. Go jump in the rig, turn around, and go do it. They'll see us drive by so many times. They'll be like, oh, these guys must work for the BLM or something. They're harmless. Pull up here to our sandwich location, just like yesterday. And there's a doe standing right there at 200 yards. But she's all alone today. Yesterday, she had five bucks running around in here chasing her. But maybe she's uh, punched her ticket, I don't know. You would think she'd drag a few of them through here somehow, somewhere. So I'm gonna make a sandwich. Keep my eyes peeled here. Well, that doe was right here. There's got to be some bucks around. That's what I thought, but I don't see any. Well, you're looking on the wrong side of the hill. Probably. Wrong side of the hill, wrong side of the tree. Who knows? I'm going to find them. Hey, Matthew. Yeah? Come look at this one. It's pretty good from here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Matthew. You want to shoot this guy. Look at those prongs, huh? Think the prongs are that big? Yeah, I think the prongs are five inches plus. I don't know, they look pretty tiny from a thousand yards away. Well, look at it in comparison to the rest of his body and his head. I'm kind of with Jace. Let's just drive the truck down there and see if he gets worked up. We, uh, we're driving down the hill and Jace spotted him bedded out here. We think it's one of the bucks from yesterday that we were chasing. So we drove a little further and parked the truck down in a little low spot and we're gonna go see if we can sneak up on him. So my dad's already heading up to the hill with the spotter and I'm gonna go follow. So hopefully it'll, we'll make it work. there you think they are 1200 yards well we should go because we need to either blow this up quick or we need to right not decide not to do it or else we're not going to get another one yep i agree so, which way follow you follow me Super windy up here. 
we just saw the buck at the watering hole down there and he ran off this direction but we don't see him now so we're wondering if he just went a little further or what and it's getting late and so i'm ready to say hey we need to cut this so that we can go back to the truck and try to find one that's a little easier to obtain i've done one too many of these this this trip where we just wind up chasing this for forever and we just don't have time to do that today and still have a chance to get something if it doesn't work out so i'm making the executive decision that if we don't find him in the next three minutes or so we're just going to head back to the truck we're going to go to the area where we saw them all around this time yesterday and we're going to try from there so if this works out great but if it doesn't i want to have a chance at something else before we leave today and because of filming and packing up camp and everything we can't take this to the bitter end like we did yesterday so I'm trying to just optimize the chances while we can Matthew was down there doing film stuff for the last half hour and I couldn't find any pronghorn. We've done some really good stocks on Matthew. Yeah, I agree. I mean, you could have filled your tag right next to a road multiple, multiple times. Yeah, but it's not quite what I'm after. I know. That's, no. And that's what I appreciate about it is we joke about your response of, I'll know when I see it. But that's true. Mm -hmm. you're, you're like, no, nah, cool, but no. And I appreciate that. Yeah. Well, if a tag doesn't get filled, then not the end of the world. No. I mean, I. It took a bunch of points to draw, but I'm not too worried about that. It's it's a hunt that we came out here and we enjoyed, and that's yeah. what matters. I will say that even if I didn't shoot a buck. I got my 25 years worth of points out of this hunt with you. Good. It was, of all the hunts we've done, filming, this one was probably the most enjoyable of any of them. Good. I'm glad. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate you taking the time to do it and putting up with me and my insanity and <laughs> my pronghorn craziness. Yeah. Well. I've had a good time. Good. Seen plenty of animals and gotten close to a couple of them, but yeah. just haven't haven't made it work. Yeah. It doesn't matter to me one way or the other. I am I just love coming out here and exploring new places and I know for you, you're probably like, yeah, I can I've got, you know, however many decades left to hunt and and I get that, but for me like dang I got hopefully I got a decade or two left but yeah every one of them with you you know going back to when you were a kid they just are special so folks if you got someone who you love who's really important to you and hunting is the fabric of your relationship kind of like hunting and fishing is with all of us I hope you find a reason to go and do it. And you're not going to be out there just quote unquote filling tags. You're going to be sharing camp, eating meals, telling stories, strategizing, tripping, stumbling, making a few mistakes, having a success once in a while. Yep. And I'm going to blame Matthew for the fact that this is the first hunt in 15 plus years of filming that I've ever shot an animal without a camera guy nearby. That's how it goes sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.